Uh, thank you for rejoining us. Uh, this is Talking Success. If you just tuned in, you came in at a good, great time. We are in the campaign season right now. And as you know, at Talking Success, we shifted away from the politicians and over to the judges. So we got a good group of judges here tonight. Now we want to talk about the appellate court, uh, which is so important. And I'll let our guests, uh, the Honorable Judge Frederina M. Lyle, explain why the appellate court is so important because if the ball is dropped on the lower court, you go to appellate court and Sometimes you can get a reprieve, you can get justice if you didn't get justice, if you received the injustice or something technical or whatever. We want to thank you for joining us here at uh, Talking Success, uh, Judge Lyle. And now you're taking a big step towards the appellate court. And we're going to make sure everybody remembers it's, it's, it's 133, right? 133. 133. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is an, indeed a big step. Uh, it is a long long, long practice before that. I practiced law for 30 years. So it is uh, not an undeserved step. It is a step that, that I have the experience, I have the qualifications under the Illinois Constitution and among those people who know what makes good appellate court justice. So in your case, kind of going back, you, 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 you practice law uh, for quite a few years. Um, um, you're a South Sider, right? Yes. And yes. and you did a lot of community work. Um, again, for those that just tuned in, we want you to go to Google and put in, you can just keep it real simple and just put in Judge Lyle and the Facebook page is going to come up and the website's going to come up. You do your own due diligence. Judge Lyle, we're trying to train the people and educate them to do their due diligence because the day are going any, many, mighty more any yes. catch a judge by his toe and you're just voting for people that you don't know or you make the excuse you bypass, you end up bypassing um, the judges because you're not familiar with who the judges are and you can't decipher from the names. So we tell people to start from the bottom up and make sure when you're coming up, you stop at 133 and, and, and move right along uh, to the other judges uh, that come thereafter. But it, it's, it's real important for people to go and, and investigate. You, you, you practiced law for over 30 years, and, and, and we know you also served as a public servant uh, in the city council. And then the, was it true that the Illinois Supreme Court made a decision? Well, I practiced for the first 18 years and, and built a law firm, and I was on the Illinois uh, Supreme Court Committee on Character and Fitness. Right. I was on the Compensation Review Board. I was the president of the Cook County Bar Association, board member of the National Bar Association. I was on all sorts of committees designed to improve the quality of lawyering. Then I was appointed as alderman of the Sixth Ward, where I served for 13 years. Uh, in 2011, I was appointed by the Illinois Supreme Court to become a circuit court judge, and I currently am assigned to the Elder Law Division and the traffic courts. Uh, the Constitution of Illinois defines the qualifications for the judges, for those that sit at the circuit court level, those that sit at the appellate court level, and the appeals court is the reviewing court. As you said correctly, if people don't feel that they've been given justice at the trial court level, they get another chance, and most of those appeals end with the appellate court. So it's the court of last resort for most people. Very few of those cases actually get to the next reviewing level, which would be the Illinois Supreme Court, and finally to the United States Supreme Court. Um, I have been active in the community for all of those years. Uh, while I was alderman, not only did I serve as alderman and an attorney, but we had a, a deficit of services in the community, so I started a not-for-profit. And I ran a not-for-profit that serviced youth for 13 years, and we served over 9,000 young people over that period of time. So I've always been dedicated and, and committed to trying to improve the condition in our lives and our community and I think I've taken that with me when I went to the bench. I make sure that everyone that comes in my courtroom is given an opportunity to be heard fully. I make sure everyone is treated appropriately. I make sure everyone is respected and I 
it's my job to see the justice is served every day, and that's why I want to go to the next level, to the appellate court, uh, to make sure that justice is served on that level also. So what division are you working in now? I'm jointly assigned to the Elder Division and Municipal First District. Uh, right now I sit in traffic court because the Elder Law Division is a division that has been announced and it is coming online. The clerk of the court has to determine how to, they've got to do some numbering so that they can separate the cases that should go to the Elder Law Division from those that should go to probate, from those that should go to uh, any of the other divisions. And that's all being worked on now. And while that happens, I'm sitting in So is this a new court. initiative for the circuit court, the Elder Law Division? It is the Elder Law and the miscellaneous remedies. They have Elder Law courtrooms in four other jurisdictions across the country. Uh, but Chief Justice, uh, Chief Judge Timothy Evans and the presiding judge of that division, Patricia Banks, they rolled it out and announced it about two years ago. And what would that deal, what type of, uh, for the people on the street uh, to get some understanding, what kind of uh, cases uh, elder law? The, the biggest thing I think we'd be handling would be cases where you are, where power of attorneys, where there are probate matters, it's a variation on probate. These are people okay. that would not necessarily have the biggest states, but may be in the need of a court to help a pro se litigant be the guardian of their mother's estate. Right. Um, there are special considerations when you have elders in the courtroom. For instance, you don't set a 230 case for elders that are beginning to feel and experience sundowning. The seniors that come into their court may need adaptive listening devices. Mm -hmm. uh, they may need someone to help them find their way to the court. We have an elder justice center that's opened up now in the basement of the Daly Center. And so those kind of considerations come into, com come into play when you're dealing with seniors, as well as the um, the concerns that seniors are being victimized, not just by strangers, but oftentimes by their families. Oh, absolutely. So we would be, a, a particular court that would be, the judges there would be trained to deal with the special nuances of elders, the kind of mental and physical conditions that they're going through, uh, that they're experiencing due to age and the problems that they are experiencing in our communities. Right, right. And, 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 and you know, just sitting here thinking that, doesn't say a lot for the community and society that we have to, you know, like you had juvenile justice, what preceded that was child protection. I think it was child protective uh, services and laws were in place for to protect the children and evolved into a, a juvenile cr criminal justice system. And now we got elders that need to be protected by the court where 50 years ago, the family and the community would protect our elders. I mean, elders don't change as they, you know, some of them, you know, people that's in their 50s and 60s considered young people now, but now we got people living older, longer. So I, I can see a need for it. And the fastest population demographic are the baby boomers that right, are right. aging out. And so right. um, it, we don't understand that traditionally in society, the children and the seniors were supposed to be the protected classes. Right. And so sometimes when we see things and you see all of these horrible things happening out here, you wonder, where did they come from? Where do these people think that they can prey on seniors and prey on children? So you, you've brought a, um, a great deal of experience as, as, as a practicing attorney, uh, providing a community service through your non-for-profit, serving in the, uh, that, I know serving in the city council had to be an experience. Uh, and then you had various committees, if I recall, that you were involved in that, that impacted uh, the total community. So people, uh, whether you live on the south side, the west side, the east side, the, the southern suburbs, western suburbs, uh, and northern suburbs, it, it's very important for you really to take a look and, and go to Google and put in Judge Lyle's name and, and, and go to the website and get more information and remember that after you do that, you want to punch 133 and start from the bottom up um, because uh, we need uh, people that's not only going to stick to the letter of the law, but I always like to talk about the spirit of the law and uh, without that's important. Some people don't understand that the spirit of the law, uh, without going too far, is just that 
and I say this person, I think women have a little bit more compassion and understanding based on their mother wit that puts them in a much better position. Um, if I had a child, I would I would prefer I just prefer working with women because they just no nonsense. And oftentimes we here talking success, we say the the best man for the job always has been, always will be a woman. That's why God selected women to be the first teachers and mothers. And no man can deny that as much as they want to. You know, men always want to take credit. But uh, women bring a certain level of humility and understanding and compassion and empathy and sympathy uh, wherever they show up. Well, clearly we need to have diversity in the in these right. rooms. You, right. you need to have diversity in the courts. You need to have diversity on these panels. Uh, and we are all the culmination of our life experiences. Right. And I think that the, the diverse life experiences that I've had, uh, practicing attorney, uh, I did appellate work. In fact, I successfully litigated the appeal for John Steele that allowed him to become the alderman. I uh, made new law in Illinois and years and years and years ago as a young lawyer and got the Illinois court to um, acknowledge and establish the fact that Illinois has a right to privacy that exceeds the rights that are given in the United States Constitution. So I've done the appellate work. I've had a, a rather successful appellate career and I've done the litigation, the trial work, and now I've done the trial management. And all of that goes with me every day and would be a part of the the analysis that we would take to the appellate court. And I think we need that diversity of opinion, diversity of race, diversity of gender, and uh, in every room where right. law is being made right. because we have a diverse right. community right. that we are Absolutely. setting laws for. Absolutely, and you mentioned John, John O. Steele, and I was just thinking, I thought it was great, you know, oh, you don't want to retire. We had five judges die on the bench in 2012, I believe, five. And, 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 and uh, uh, the Honorable John uh, O. Steele decided to uh, retire, which is left room for someone else to come. And now, you know, he's a predecessor, and, 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 and now we got new people moving up. If he would have stayed there another 20 years, then that wouldn't have made room. It's only so many... Uh, um, uh, uh, people that s sit That's on right. the appellate court, right? There are 24 appellate court justices, and right now we have five African-American, three African-American women, actually, uh, because Justice Mark Salone retired and Justice John O'Steele are both retired. Right. Uh, so it, did, it seemed like he wasn't on that. What is it, a 10-year? Um, it's a 10-year term. 10-year term. Mm -hmm. It's a 10-year term. So. And... Um, and when your term is up at 10 years, do you have to run again or you be up for retention? You be up for retention. Okay, so okay, it's so a retention, retention. Okay, well, that's good. And we got a lot of uh, young um, uh, attorneys that are becoming young judges. And we want them because many times by the time that the different uh, associations that decide who should get on, by the time that they find an African-American candidate's qualified, you're almost at the end of your career. Right. Well, we want to thank you for coming to Talk to Success. Next time we see you, we want to be able to say, there goes Justice Lyle. We will. will if no longer be judge, it'll be justice. And all they have to do is punch 133. Okay. Thank you for coming out. Thank you so much okay. for having us all and right. doing this service. All right.